The past few years have seen an astronomical rise in the amount of vloggers and Instagrammers, influencers if you will, traveling to Southeast Asia and particularly the Philippines. One major reason is of course the beauty of the country. For islands, beaches and jungle waterfalls, the Philippines is a wonderland. However, for every wonderlusting vlogger that goes there to see the sights and learn about the culture, there are also many that just see dollar signs and clickbaiting opportunities, and this is their main purpose in the Philippines. Many Westerners' purpose there is due to their Filipino wife or girlfriend, or maybe they have some background there, like some former U.S. Navy. Some, unfortunately, are old pervs and sex-addicted pickup artists that will spread their diseases like HIV. But in the case of the travel vloggers, they are essentially going there to build their channels and for little else. We will show you what we mean. For many travel vloggers, they see their channels explode literally the moment they step off the plane in Manila. And they can immediately see the vast majority of their new subs and viewers are Filipinos. ka -ching! It doesn't take a rocket scientist or even a marketing whiz to figure out what they need to do next. They gotta follow the Philippine butt-kissing formula. It's common knowledge Filipinos are the most active in the world on social media and YouTube. It is also very well known that Filipinos love foreigners, especially white people, and are also obsessed with foreign praise of their country. Now, whether or not this praise is genuine, it doesn't matter. Many Filipinos are totally fine with being bullshitted as long as there's a handsome foreigner doing the bullshitting. Furthermore, there are many OFW that are homesick and are easily clickbaited, especially by the handsome, butt-kissing, fake praise-giving foreigners. So what's an easy way to build a channel? Stay in the Philippines and kiss butt to Filipinos like there's no tomorrow. Dial the clickbaiting up to an 11 and sit back and watch those AdSense dollars roll in. If something bad happens, either ignore it completely or lie and say it rarely happens and say there's no danger and then they can move right back to the never-ending praise. If they want to leave the Philippines to check out another wonderful Asian country like Japan, they need to be prepared for the butthurt crybabies that will feel insulted that they left the Philippines. The audacity for a foreigner to come to the Philippines and leave, how dare they? Never mind, they might need to do a visa run or take a break from the heat and humidity. Remember, us whites are from cold countries. Most of us are, anyway. But these vloggers have figured out a way around the butthurt subs as well. When they do visit another country, they just trash the country they're visiting. Look for all the negative things. Basically, the opposite formula that they use in the Philippines. That way, their subs don't get butthurt. And then when they return to the Philippines they can continue on with the butt-kissing formula. As for the clickbaits, they are relentless. For a lot of these butt-kissing foreign vloggers in the Philippines, it's become more about clickbaiting and less about quality content. Speaking of content, it's all the same. There is zero originality. It's because there's too many vloggers now, and they're all the same. It used to be original a few years ago, yes. But now it's become a bit of a joke. The same places are vlogged ad nauseum. The same lame electronica music. The same waterfall. The same backflip off of the waterfall. The same pictures on their Instagram. And the same, quote, foreigner first time does this. Or foreigner first time does that. Or a foreigner goes to Jollibee. Or a foreigner eats balut. Who cares if a foreigner goes to Jollibee? They even have Jollibee in the US and Canada, for God's sake. And the clickbaits are not only getting ridiculous, but the same clickbaits are being used over and over and over again. The worst one is, we didn't expect this in the Philippines. Look how many have used it. Way to be original. And the kicker is that they'll never tell the viewer what they actually did expect. The reason is that the truth will offend their Filipino subs. So they just lie. So many of the same clickbaits and the same of everything. It's like a monkey with a miniature symbol banging it together over and over again. And it's precisely why the travel vlogging scene in the Philippines is going to become stale and boring. Because there are just too many channels now that new channels just won't see the same growth as before. Not even close. There is a limit. 
There simply is <clears throat> too many to watch now. Like a saturated market. And like anything else, when there's too much of something, the novelty wears off. And there are just way too many butt-kissing vloggers going to the Philippines or already there. We got some blatant examples of butt-kissing by foreign vloggers. Including Everyday TV. They painted their scooter with the Filipino flag, even though they're 100% British. They also sing Pinoy songs on their vlogs. The Juicy Vlog. They use the same clickbaits over and over again. We didn't expect this in the Philippines. They must have used that a hundred times already. They've had about three first impressions. Uh-oh, retard alert! Look, you cannot have more than one first impression of the Philippines or of anywhere. Otherwise, it's no longer a first impression. They are clearly only there for money. That one, that's just obvious. Brett Maverick. He has a fake obsession with a Filipino celebrity named Maine Mendoza and uses it to clickbait. He is sometimes funny, but he's also a bit douchey. For example, he's trespassed on private property and he ran naked in Mindanao along the side of the road. Not cool. He's from one of the most beautiful places in Canada and has much better waterfalls five minutes from his house. I know I've been there. But there's no point vlogging there because there's no views. You can't clickbait Canadians, so there's no money in it. Kyle Jenneman, or Becoming Filipino. Okay, this guy's channel's name is basically click clickbait. And he runs around high-fiving the locals and acting like everything is perfect while poverty is all around him. It's culturally inappropriate for a rich white guy to go to a third world country and say he's becoming them. What an insensitive prick, like he knows anything about the struggles of the average poor Filipinos. Wake up, Filipinos. This guy is totally using your culture for money. And he says he's becoming Filipino, but how much do you want to make a bet? He keeps that Canadian passport close by and in a very safe place. Danny, hashtag got a world to see. He's one of the worst for fake praise and uses very similar clickbaits as the Juicy Vlog and Making It Happen Vlog. Finn Snow. Now this guy loves the Philippines, but only because he became famous there, mainly for being a six foot tall Scandinavian. Uses the fake praise and follows the vlogger formula to a T. Bisayan Hilao. He sticks his camera in the face of locals and often high fives locals and flirts with girls on his vlogs, even though he supposedly has a girlfriend. His interaction with locals is what sets him apart from others as he speaks fluent Bisayan, but he often acts a bit douchey, kind of like Brett Maverick, and also his friends, the War Brothers, acted like total douchebags to a Filipina working at Jollibee. They made her look like an idiot and made fun of her. It must have been very upsetting and embarrassing for her, and especially since she was just trying to do her job, and she was trying really hard at that, and she was trying to help them order their food at Jollibee, and they made it a big joke, with her as the focus of the joke, and that's unfair. I wonder if they even asked her permission to be the focus of their vlog. I doubt it. Many of these vloggers lie about things like safety and security. We talked about that already on our last video. We are not saying all of the Philippine vloggers are like this. Only some. Mainly, it's the young backpackers that have travel vlogs and are desperate for money. We will soon do a vlog about our favorite travel vloggers and Philippines-based vloggers to show we are actually very objective and we are not painting them all with the same brush. Many travel vloggers go to the Philippines and other parts of Southeast Asia and they don't use the same extreme clickbaiting formula and they don't just stay in the one country where they can make the most money. Some of note include The One-Armed Wanderer, Volpe Where Are You, Wanderlusting, Mitchell's Travels, and Gareth Leonard. Watch these vloggers and compare them to the clickbaiters we mentioned. Big difference. Huge difference. One are actually vlogging for money and the other are vlogging for fun. And one is honest and one is not. And I think it's pretty damn clear which ones are honest and which ones are not. And the clickbaiting, fake praise giving foreign vloggers are the dishonest ones. And the vloggers we just mentioned, the ones that are clearly vlogging not for money, are the ones that are the ones that are going to tell the truth and it's a huge difference and it's it's actually really good to watch these vlogs because 
you're getting the real Philippines. And you get the real Philippines from a lot of the expats who are also vlogging in the Philippines. A lot of excellent channels. And um, you're not getting the real Philippines from 25-year-old butt-kissing travel vloggers. You're just not. So don't watch them. Thank you.